So the next delegate, uh, deputation is um, Tom Hooper and Garth Carnaby from the Canterbury Development Corporation. And we have uh, item number 20 on our agenda, which I do propose that we deal with um, at the same time, because it does include the information that you're going to talk to. That's so good. I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, well, first of all, you've had an update um, from CDC, which has been tabled. And I just thought that since this was the first time we'd been in front of the new council, um, just to make a couple of general points at the outset. Uh, firstly, our role. Our role is to make interventions which will stimulate the regional economy. Um, as far as what actual interventions uh, we should make and will make, we are guided in that by an intervention logic. And that logic recognises there's sometimes a political dimension to the interventions that might be taken. But CDC is strictly apolitical and we take guidance on the interventions that we make with public money from both the city and central government. The question I'm sometimes asked is how do the councillors influence these interventions that we make? And I can tell you that firstly we listen to the public policy position that the council takes, but more specifically Tom has since the elections been and seen all of you at least once, some of you twice and some of you more than that to, to get a feel for the new flavour of um, policy. Four of you are sitting on the CDC board in the governance role, and, um, but the key process is the LTP process and the um, activity management plan. That's a council process to distill the council consensus. And uh, that defines uh, our choices through the levels of service agreement, which is negotiated between your executive and ours. So you might ask what's changed um, since the new council came into, into being. Well, first of all, we were asked to get closer to the City Council and use the CDC's resources to help the City Council with the rebuild uh, and to use um, our independent relationships with government to support the Council in that process. And to that end, Tom has been seconded to the Mayor's office for a day a week, but he carries with him the whole infrastructure of CDC that he can draw on. Secondly, we've launched a major new project on suburban community redevelopment and local business enterprise. That's just coming together now, uh, but it's a major new initiative for us. And the third area um, is that we've started providing a lot more guidance informed by our business links uh, to target internship and apprenticeship programs um, which support the underlying long-term economic growth targets. But I'll let Tom tell you a little bit more about the detail of those, um, some of the things in the report. Thanks, Garth. So um, we thought we would use this both as a little bit of an opportunity to um, talk to full council about the direction that CDC is going in and, and also really the activity that's, that's been happening in recent months since, since council took over. Um, so just with regard to progress and current activity, um, Garth referred to the central government relationships that, that CDC has. And um, in the last 12 months, those relationships have um, advanced in a number of areas. So we now have um, fairly regular contact with MB, Treasury, the Reserve Bank, um, Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet, NZTE, um, Callaghan, um, and a variety of other ministries. Those relationships come about for, through a number of the efforts that CDC have. So firstly, the, the, economic, the regional economic reporting and information that we produce, and I think you've got the quarterly economic update in the reading pack. Um, 
that information is now used by a number of different ministries as the regional economic reporting for the region. So um, we, we have responsibility for the economic recovery monitoring and reporting for SERA. That was one of the first activities that was transitioned out of SERA. Um, we use that report and a number of others to collate um, a variety of regional economic indicators, um, which now a number of ministries are using uh, as information on the region. Um, look, the other area where we engage significantly with central government is around national programs where there is a regional delivery element. Um, so CDC is a partner of the Crown um, in a, a, look, a whole variety of initiatives that we look at. Um, and in the last 12 months in particular, um, there's really been some significant progression in a number of those areas. So um, notably, there will be a, a food innovation pilot plant built out at the Lincoln Agricultural Hub that's being developed um, that CDC has initiated the business model for. Actually, the, the entity that will run it is a CDC-owned subsidiary. Um, but the capital and the vast majority of the operating revenue will be provided by central government. Um, and that's actually a, a, a relatively significant investment. Um, so we'll see a, a physical infrastructure built in the, built in the region. Along the same lines, um, we're a partner in the innovation precinct with MB. Um, and as part of that partnership, um, there will be an innovation hub developed within the innovation precinct which will provide co-working space, it'll be somewhere we can run the incubation and accelerator programs for young entrepreneurs and startups who want to get going in the region. And again, same thing, CDC will run that program, but actually the funding provided comes through, comes through our partnership with MB. Um, so we have a number of very strong operational partnerships with the different ministries. Um, just to give you an idea, in the last 12 months we've either renewed, extended or signed new contracts with Crown Departments for $13.5 million worth of funding, um, which um, is significant, well, it's more than three times what our annual funding is from, from Council at the moment. So we work pretty hard to leverage our Council funding with the, um, with the Crown relationships to make sure we get, we get good return. Um, and just while I'm while I'm talking about in particular some of the some of the different programs that are that are out there, um, in conjunction with the innovation hub, that's actually part of a wider regional innovation program that has a number of different programs that sit within it. And uh, one of one of the other elements that will be new for the region in the next 12 months is we signed a um, we signed a program with MB to deliver an accelerator program into the city. So there's only one of three that exist in the country. Um, and it will see a dedicated, tailored and really quite um, defined short-term program to accelerate company growth come into the region. It will be based in the Innovation Hub and in the, in the Innovation Precinct and we'll see a number of businesses ideally be able to de be developed significantly faster than they would have been otherwise. So CDC's role, I think Garth touched on it a little bit, is really is to do what we can to, to help the wider overall economy. Um, I think you mentioned one of the other one of the other changes that we've talked about, which is considering the suburban economic communities. So um, one of the challenges of the rebuild is that it isn't just about the CBD. Um, actually, it's about some of the wider community areas as well. Um, so as a result of conversations with our board and with the other councillors, where we got a, a very clear stare that there was some concern out there, we've been out and had a little bit of a look um, at a number of the different communities. Um, and in particular the business, the business communities in the, in the suburbs. Um, and we do have some concerns. Um, in particular, we have some concerns around building costs and as a result of building costs, rental rates for businesses that will be, you know, traditional businesses that would be in the smaller communities. We think there's a piece of work that needs to be done there. Um, that piece of work looks pretty complex, um, but I think at the end of it, the idea will be to bottom out what actually is the role that CDC and the city can play in trying to assure that those communities recover and have, have strong local economies. Um, so that's a specific area of focus and one we're intending on, on spending a little bit of time. Um, look, rather than, rather than talk for all of our allocated time, we thought it might be useful to um, throw the floor open to questions and, and just respond to anything that, that anybody would like to know. Well, it's a good point that you just ended on because I know Ali's got a question that she'd like to ask that, that probably links on to that. Yep. 
Yeah, thank you. Hi. Um, I just wondered if you'd done an evaluation of Recover Canterbury, which, you know, we're, we're all in agreement, and more broadly speaking, I think, across the city, it was, a, 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 from our perspective, a hugely successful and much needed um, program. But I just wonder about the evaluation of that and perhaps identifying the successes where it worked really well and some of the specific examples. Have you done that? Yes, so as part of the, as part of the wind up of Recover Canterbury with the Crown, there was a um, really pretty comprehensive paper developed on, on Recover Canterbury, the organisation, what it actually did, what we felt worked really well and actually what we would suggest should be done differently if we did it again. And that's, um, Civil Defence actually hold that as a, a kind of, in case of emergency, break glass um, paper that other regions can use around what you set up. Because the, the whole, not just, not just within the city, but the whole national view of Recover Canterbury was that it was an outstanding success and really the way you should, you should do things. Um, so I've got, I, I have access to it. Yeah, it would be great if you could distribute mm -hmm. it to councillors. Um, yes, of course. Yeah, I'd certainly be very interested in reading that as well. Did you get any learnings out of it that you've implemented yourself? You know, like um, I think, you know, some of the work around the, the smaller localities came off that. That's why I thought they were connected. Um, yes, absolutely. So I think one of the things that Recover Canterbury highlighted was the um, the sensitivity of the outlying regions and some of the some of the challenges that they face. But the other huge thing that it highlighted, and probably the the biggest critical success factor that drove Recover Canterbury was the importance of collaboration. Mm. So, you know, Recover Canterbury was the chamber, CDC, government ministries, including inland revenue, you know, <laughs> all working together and engaging to try and help the business community. And that was what really drove the success of it. If I could make another comment, Mayor, the, um, the wage subsidy and the speed with which that was introduced was an outstanding decision. Absolutely. Um, the other thing that I observed was that speed in setting up the legal entities is absolutely critical because the amount of um, uh, money likely to be donated uh, tails off dramatically and exponentially with time. Mm. So that if you take too long to set up your trust, uh, the yep. amount of money you collect is minimal. The, it doesn't last long, the yep. window. That's true. Uh, Jimmy Chen and then Yanni. Uh, one question. Regarding to the uh, use the resources to rebuild or reconstruct the city, I'm wondering, uh, I reviewed uh, this uh, uh, Christchurch economic development strategy. I didn't see that, you know all those resources like capital, technology, and skilled people from the international. So where is the strategy to assess or obtain those resources from overseas? So to retain the international resources that are coming in for the, for the rebuild? Yes. Is it? So um, we would say that's part of the workforce and migration strategy. Um, one of the huge pluses that the region is currently enjoying and part of the reason why um, our labour market hasn't got significantly worse has been the very good migrate, inbound migration into the, into the city. That's partially rebuild driven, um, but it's also some, some of the other highly skilled workforce that we need for our underlying economic sectors coming in. We think, one, keeping migration going really strongly is very important in the upcoming couple of years but actually the retention of those people in the economy beyond the rebuild will go a long way towards determining the growth of the overall economy. So, um, Jimmy, it sits within the workforce strategy and around how we make sure they stick into the, into the region, but migration is of fundamental importance in the next couple of years. Uh, Yanni and then Andrew. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you for the work you're doing and thank you for coming to Council today. Um, I, I was just interested in how you're getting on with the independent peer review of the economic benefits of the anchor projects that we asked for early last year. Um, so obviously things are progressing and it would be really good um, to get some understanding around the economic benefits of those projects. So what work's been done and when can we expect to see it? So Sarah have not completed the independent, the economic benefits of the overall anchor projects for us to peer review. 
Um, so we haven't been able to do the peer review because we haven't actually got the piece of work that we needed from Sarah to be able to peer review it. We're ready to do it um, at, at any time. Like what I don't understand is things like the bus exchange, the, the justice precinct, they're already committed to. Are you saying that you're seeing no business case around um, those? So we, didn't, we haven't seen a business case. Um, that doesn't mean there isn't one. Um, what it means is they haven't provided us with an, economic, an overall economic benefit analysis for us to be able to peer review. So what do you need from us to actually be able to do that work? Do you need us to formally request government provide those business cases to you? It just seems like, you know, I think in terms of our investment in the rebuild and the recovery, we kind of want to make sure that actually the investment is, um, you know, suitable given the potential economic benefits that are being espoused, but yet we've had no information to show why it makes sense to invest in, say, you know, a central bus interchange versus housing or an Avon River precinct versus wider places in the city. So is there anything we can do to speed up, help get that process happening? Question. Um, so we could, council could request the economic benefit analysis um, if it hasn't been completed, which I suspect is the which I suspect is the case, Yanni, um, then I'm I'm not sure how we would go in getting getting work delivered. But a, a request would be helpful. Question: But do you actually need the government to provide you with their figures? As, I mean, if you take the Avon River precinct, what is it that you wouldn't know that that would stop you from doing a a, a kind of um, economic benefit or a social? So, so analysis of that project. So we, we could do that, yeah. but that's different But they to haven't been asked to do the original work, Yanni. They've been asked to peer review the work mm. that the government yeah. does. So, um, but, but I think that um, I think we, should follow, we should follow up on this. I think yeah. this is an important issue because um, at every stage of the process, um, you know, our ratepayers are asking us for, for this kind of value assessment, and I think yeah. the peer review role that CDC can play is actually an important one. So we, we can certainly raise that with central government about the um, getting the business case analysis um, um, together so that we can actually ask you to peer, peer review it. I guess I, I guess I was probably coming at a more fundamental change in that is asking for a peer review actually the right mechanism and should we, could we be asking you to do something other than a peer review? We, we could, but we don't fund benefits. CDC to do the original work. So, um, I mean, they're not set up to do that original work. They would need access to all of the information that, that Sarah would have. So, I mean, Sarah's the right organisation to be providing that advice to ministers, but um, a, along with Treasury and others. But it, it seems to me that we're a step removed from that process. So. Um, but I think it is a, a, a valid point to raise, and I think how we now take it forward is something that we can raise with and, central government. And just so I'm clear, you're, you're doing the economic reporting for Sarah and the government now? On the region, yeah, so the on the region. Economic monitoring and reporting on the economic recovery, so yeah. So that's probably pretty important that you get the information about where the money's being spent they're and They're two different things. Yeah, so they're, yeah. They're, they, are, they are slightly different things. Look, it, it, it is a good point though. Yeah. Um, but I think the point's been made, yeah, so, okay. um, and I okay. really want to let Andrew have a question before we wrap up. Thank you. Great, thank you, and um, thanks for the presentation this morning. Um, I'm particularly pleased to see um, consideration of the challenges of development economics in the suburbs, um, and certainly aware of, of some suburbs in, in Christchurch that will benefit from that work. Can you perhaps expand a little bit on that as to what your areas of, of focus would be and to what extent they'll be aligned with the suburban master planning work that the city's already done and some good work that's already been done out there by local business associations? Thanks, Andrew. Um, so answer is has to be has to be aligned with both of those groups. So anything that we any, any interventions that we actually line up would be with those as fundamental partnerships. So the city around the planning and the local business communities around around work that can be done. Um, areas that we think are of concern, um, I think I, I touched on already. Um, affordability of rental rental space. In, in local business communities clearly looks an issue, um, in particular around rebuild of, rebuild of vacant sites. Um, so that's one. Business, business attraction and retention within some specific suburban communities also looks a concern. 
Um, and that is um, some of that actually can be mitigated with consenting and planning, I suspect, a little bit. Um, but there are, there are also clearly, I think, some strategic tweaks needed in terms of how we can ensure we don't have flight out of the suburban business communities. And I, and I do think there's a little bit of risk there just at the moment. The, the last question is, is mine, because I'm allowed to. Um, what, um, and we did have a discussion about this as a, as a, as a group, but um, when you talk about an innovation eco ecosystem, what, what do you mean by that, and how does that, um, how does that start to emerge in a post-disaster environment? Sure. Okay. Uh, I, I feel um, inferior talking about this with the chair next to me who has 30 years' experience in, in this stuff. But um, look, an innovation ecosystem is the idea that it's not about it's not about things; it's about the system that supports innovation. So that's that's from capital and the ability to fund startups to enable them to get going. It's through the ability to advise businesses and entrepreneurs about what they can do. It's actually the fostering of the type of people that will make entrepreneurs, and those can be social entrepreneurs, they can be commercial entrepreneurs. Um, the innovation ecosystem in New Zealand is really tough because we've got a relatively small population, we've got thin capital markets, we're a long way away from big product markets. So to get things going here is more difficult than other places in the world. We've got some unique advantages in the region. So we have seven of the eight Crown Research Institutes in Canterbury. Mm. We have three tertiary institutions. We have what will be one of the best district health boards in the country, if not, if not in, the, in the continent. Um, there's an awful lot of fantastic IP generated in the region. And one of the things that we think about is how do we turn that into successful growth, both in new businesses and as importantly, within existing businesses. So there's a, that great Kiwi DIY attitude is a real strength of ours, but it's also a weakness in some ways in that we tend to bootstrap things and do them, do them entrepreneurially rather than look at it and say, well, look, where's the logical partner and how do we get that going? CDC's intent is to create an ecosystem around all of that that says we can make this system more efficient, we can create growth within the region, and we can create somewhere that young people want to come because actually innovation is treated differently. Yeah. It's Excellent. not just one intervention, it's, it's a range of interventions that, it's a type of soft infrastructure we've created in Canterbury, it's unique in the country, but it means that if a professor at Canterbury University has a bright idea, that idea is supported all the way until there's a small company with its own board set up and operating to commercialise it. And, and the infrastructure comes in behind that process. Previously, we just dropped the ball time after time and the professor went, got another grant and did something else and put the IP on the shelf, nothing happened. Yeah, but, that's, but it's also about the young person that, that, that comes along because they, they hear that Christchurch has got this Absolutely. thing happening because they read Lonely Planet or something. And, and, and their incredible ideas suddenly, um, you know, turning into something maybe more social entrepreneur oriented. So it's both, it's yeah. not one or the other. Look, ab absolutely. Precinct, yeah. yeah, so the new precinct, the new, the new attitude that Christchurch has the opportunity to present. Um, look, what we're doing here is now being used as the template around the rest of the country. So the, the national, um, national high-tech incubation program that has just been released where Again, Christchurch has we're one of one of three of those nationally. That is our template. So the the crown has taken what we do here and the way that incubation program runs through Powerhouse, and they've put it out nationally. So it, it's now being used as a as a national template based on the way we're trying to trying to develop the system here. Great. No, I think that's a very positive note to end on. So thank you very much. And um, sorry it's taken so long, you know, to have you here, but uh, I think we'll make this more regular. Great. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Right, so let's um, uh, deal with item number 20.